Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI, Integrative Movement Insider. Hope your week has started out well. In this Saturday's edition of Two Anatomy Geeks, we're discussing frontal plane stability and rotation of the ankle and foot. Technically, the foot doesn't do a lot of pure rotation. It moves through the frontal plane. It will move through the sagittal plane as well. It will move through the transverse plane, so the foot will abduct, go this direction away from the midline of the foot, or the body, I should say, or it will adduct, go and move more towards the midline of the body. However, it doesn't do pure rotation as we think about pure rotation. Rather, the structures above it, or the joints above it, the knee and the hip, they will direct where the tibia and fibula are in space, so knee rotation, so the hamstrings, the popliteus at the knee will have a big role or a major role in determining where the foot is placed on the ground. Now, we're, we focused on that in the last edition of Facebook Live. Now we'll focus more on the frontal plane control of the ankle and foot. There's a cool little anatomical attachment that happens between the posterior tibialis or the tibialis posterior Tibialis posterior attaches to the bottom of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. I should say, let me back up. The peroneus, the peroneus longus, which comes off your the lateral side of your fibula, will wrap down and around the lateral malleolus. So it kind of wraps down and around the lateral malleolus, malleolus to the bottom of the foot, and it will attach to the bottom side of that metatarsal, the base of the first metatarsal, so the big toe, the long bone of the big toe and then also that cuneiform. So it wraps underneath, so it creates this sort of sling-like effect underneath the foot, or support, stirrup type of support underneath the foot. Well, the posterior tibialis, or tibialis posterior, comes from the backside of the tibia and the interosseous membrane. It wraps around the medial malleolus. Let me come around this direction. It will wrap around the medial malleolus to attach very similarly to the base of that first metatarsal, so that's the long bone of the first or the inside of the foot, and that medial cuneiform as well. So these two muscles, so the posterior tibialis or tibialis posterior, and the peroneus longus, they create this sort of stirrup effect. Let me back up even further. <laughs> so let, let me go back just a little bit. It's really more like the anterior tibialis. I, I apologize for that. I was thinking anterior tibialis, and I said posterior tibialis. So anterior tibialis comes from the front side of the tibia, and it comes down to, this is why Jill does the anatomical discussions during our two lectures. The tibialis anterior actually comes down from the front side of the tibia to the top side, or the dorsum, of the first metatarsal and the cuneiform. So again, just to recap, peroneus longus comes underneath and around the lateral around the lateral malleolus, underneath the foot, to attach into the base of the first metatarsal and cuneiform. The anterior tibialis comes from the front side of the tibia, tibia to come down to the dorsum of the metatarsal and that cuneiform. They create the stirrup effect. So let me go back to my original analogy here. Apologize for that. Probably didn't have enough coffee this morning. <laughs> I had plenty of coffee. So... So you get this sort of stirrup effect and support for the frontal plane control of the ankle and foot complex. So that's what helps us to control ourselves when we go into single leg stance and we're standing on a single leg stance, we're able to control that frontal plane motion of the ankle and foot complex. So again, those knee rotators as well as the hip rotators as well as the center of mass control places the foot on the floor. If we have everything working above it, then we get good placement of the foot upon the floor or the ground, and then the frontal plane stabilizers control this motion of the foot. So the anterior tibialis and that peroneus longus attaching to the base of the first metatarsal as well as the first cuneiform control the frontal plane. And obviously the other muscles of the ankle and foot are also working to control the frontal plane of the ankle and foot. What we often see with our clients that have inversion ankle sprains, so with the ankle and foot go this direction, we get overstretching of the peroneus longus, we can get some shortening of the tibialis anterior and or the tibialis posterior as well. 
and oftentimes the midfoot will become quite stiff because of the attachments of these muscles that have shortened and then the weakening and over lengthening of the peroneus longus. So if you visualize the peroneus longus being on the outside of the foot, we can get weakening inhibition of the peroneus longus as well as overstretching of the ligaments on the lateral ankle or the anterior portion of the ankle and now we start to lose some of that frontal plane control. And you'll see this oftentimes in your clients when they stand on one leg and you see them you, they're, they're rapidly going into pronation, supination, pronation, supination. More specifically, they're going very rapidly into eversion, inversion, eversion, inversion, because they don't have great frontal plane control. So one of the things we're going to discuss this week on Two Anatomy Geeks is how do we train our clients to create better alignment of the foot so the foot actually lands where it should because the more compromised this frontal plane control control becomes, the more your client wants to turn their foot out because this becomes a more stable position. So you, if you do this standing on one leg, your foot should relatively be facing straight forward, but the more compromised that you become in frontal plane, the more you'll turn your foot out, your client will turn their foot out because now that gives them a little bit better base of support or wider base of support for control. Not great long term for the quality of your movement and or the position of your big toe and or even the rest of the foot as you're walking forward if your foot is not facing relatively straight forward and you're not coming relatively across your metatarsophalangeal joints. So I hope that made sense. Apologize for that error in the beginning. You, your anterior tibialis, tibialis anterior, as well as the peroneus longus, create the stirrup effect around the base of the first metatarsal to really help control that frontal plane motion along with a bunch of other muscles. When we have inversion ankle sprains, we tend to overstretch the peroneus longus, get an inhibition of the peroneus longus and overstretching of the ligaments. So we start to compromise that lateral control of the ankle and foot complex. And oftentimes your client will compensate by rotating that tibia at the knee to create that a better base of support to make up for some of that frontal plane, the loss of frontal plane control. So it's up to you and I to be able to identify that, help our clients create better foot tripod support. So support underneath the big toe, the small toe and the heel, and then to help them create strategies to improve the position of the foot. So, so that way the tibia can rest underneath the femur where it belongs, which will help them improve balance, help them improve control on the foot tripod and help them start to develop the strength and stability to start to push off the foot as they need to for balance for walking and if they're a runner, return to running safely and effectively. We'll be talking about that this week, frontal plane control as well as rotation control at the knee. In this version of Two Anatomy Geeks is part three of a rotation series we've been discussing in the last couple series of Two Anatomy Geeks. This is part three of a three part series. The link is next to this video, wherever you're watching it. We would love to see you. It's a great community. Two Anatomy Geeks is a great community of like-minded individuals, health and fitness professionals that are just looking to up-level their knowledge, their skill set, so they can help more clients. We'd love to have you as part of it. Jill does an amazing job, much more clear than I do, <laughs> of describing the anatomical attachments. I share with you how you can take this knowledge into using the most effective assessments and corrective exercises to help your clients improve the functional stability of their ankle and foot complex and improve the alignment of their lower extremity, which will take a lot of stress off their knees and take a lot of stress off the ankle and foot complex. So we'd love to see you. You can click on the link in the bio to enroll and or to learn more information. And we look forward to seeing you this Saturday. Make it a great day. Go out there, be the leaders that your, your community needs be that individual that brings people together and really helps them transform their lives with the power of posture, movement, and overall great well-being. Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI, Integrative Movement Institute. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.